Hi, this is uh, Bennett Tchaikovsky, and welcome to an overview of managerial accounting. My disclaimer and copyright notice, the information and opinions in this presentation are those of the author only, and not the author's employers or affiliated organizations, including but not limited to Irvine Valley College and the South Orange County Community College District. The presentation is for educational purposes only and does not constitute any legal or accounting advice whatsoever. This presentation is copyright 2008 to 2020 by Bennett Tchaikovsky. All rights are preserved. Any distribution is strictly prohibited. prohibited. Uh, presentations from time to time use information from third parties or the third party information. The third party information is a property of those respective copyright holders and the author does not make any claim to the third party information. So let's talk really quickly about managerial versus financial accounting. And so we've, we've come from a financial accounting course and hopefully during that course, you learned how to record transactions and to build uh, financial statements. And so in this class, in terms of looking at rules or meaning that, you know, what do we have to follow? Well, in you know, financial accounting, we had to follow GAAP or generally accepted accounting principles. And, you know, when we look at, you know, if we were to do, if we're to prepare a financial statement for a company like Macy's, I would have to go and say, well, their um, the historical cost or what they originally paid for uh, those particular assets was say $6 billion. Now move over to managerial accounting. Managerial accounting uses non-GAAP measures. And so what a managerial accountant might be going through and doing is saying, well, what is their property, plant, and equipment really worth? And as you'll see, it could actually be worth, in Macy's case, I think some analysts have estimated it to be 17 or $21 billion. But that's just kind of a difference between that. And one of the other important things is with managerial is with financial um, you know, look at the focus, right? For the financial accounting, we're really focused on the, on the historical data. When we look at a financial statement for Tesla or for another company, we are really looking at their past results. In managerial accounting, what we would be doing is saying, okay, well, we're making this Model X, we're making this Model 3, uh, what does the Cybertruck look like? And we'll be make, going through and making projections. And that also kind of goes in terms as well as, as with the audience is when you're looking at financial accounting, if we go to sec.gov or that Securities and Exchange Commission, Securities Exchange Commission's website, and we look at, we can look at all the financial information. You would not be finding future information about what a company's plans are directly in terms of detailed reports. And that's why over here from managerial, this is really being used internally to make better business decisions. So our focus is in, manage, in financials generally in the past and with uh, managerial, we're really focused on the future. We're gonna look at some historical data, but it's generally gonna be focused on the future. Um, we report non-GAAP information. Again, things that are gonna be in real time, we're not set to rules. We are trying to get information to the company's management so they can be uh, so they can work more effectively with inventory and on a financial side um, for financial accounting we're really focused on inventory in the retailer meaning that the retailer purchases items and then they turn around and they sell it to a consumer in managerial accounting our focus is going to be on uh, the manufacturers and with the manufacturers, as we'll see shortly, they go through a little bit of a different process than they would be for a retailer because they're actually creating the product. They're taking a raw material, they're adding in labor, they're adding in that overhead, and they're creating a product. As far as timeliness is concerned, with financial accounting, um, the information uh, is set forth by the Securities and Exchange Commission in terms of when it has to be filed. So depending upon the, of the type of the company, when financial accounting, we have to report it within a certain period of time. With managerial, we really want that information to be immediate. An example would be if we looked at the 10K for say a company like Facebook 
and we looked at their 10K for the year ended uh, December 31st. And actually, might they might be on a 9:30 year end. I have to go check. But anyways, if they're filing, if a company is filing a financial report as of December 31st, they're doing that generally in April or in February of the following year. So that you know that month by that that information is already 60 days old. In managerial accounting, if there's something wrong with our production, we need to know immediately so that we can basically make change. So let's go from over here to our next slide, which is the differences between inventory uh, for financial versus managerial accounting. And so with a retailer, um, they're essentially gonna be receiving that inventory and then reselling the inventory to a consumer. And let's go through here and just take a quick look at how this uh, works. So here, this is for, when I look at this right over here, this is inventory that is for a, this again right over here, this would be for a traditional retailer. And this should be a review for you and uh, for financial accounting. One of the things that you will see me do is when I am going through and explaining the concepts in this chapter, and really for the first, for chapters 15 through 16, um, or, you know, man, basically cost account, general cost accounting, job order costing, process costing. I use key accounts heavily because it gives me a visual view. If you've never used T accounts before, um, please take a look at some of the videos that I'll post below. But generally, we put our balance sheet equation here on top of the T, T account. Our assets are equal to our liabilities plus our owner's equity. Therefore, and we put our nation's capital, which is Washington, D.C., or debit credit. The place I do not want to end up on the weekend is the ER or the emergency room or expenses and revenue. When I look at inventory right here if for a retailer, I've got my beginning inventory plus my purchases. And then once I sell inventory, I'm taking that over here to cost of goods sold, which is an expense. So I'm increasing my inventory over here with these debits, and then I'm decreasing it once I sell that inventory. So this is how it works for a retailer. Going back over here now for a manufacturer, it's going to be very different. And why is that? Well, with a manufacturer is you're making the product from scratch, you know, just taking it and selling it to a consumer. So what we're going to have is we're going to have a series of different accounts. And the ones we're going to be using most prominently will be things such as raw materials inventory. Um, we'll also have uh, finished good work in process as well as finished goods. And then we're going to have some temporary accounts as well. So let's go through and take a look at this, uh, go back over here to the sheet and kind of see what the flow looks like. So this is what it is right over here for a traditional, um, this is really for a traditional retailer, but for a manufacturer, right? This is, this is how it's going to look. And this is significantly different than that of a retailer. Let's just take a look at this right over here. So. We, got, we have raw materials inventory. And what exactly are raw materials inventory? These, so if I'm making, say, wooden chairs, the raw materials would be the lumber that I'm using to make those chairs. So we would have our beginning amount of raw materials inventory, which would just be wood. I would then have raw materials purchases. Um, and then I would say here is like, okay, so this is like my beginning plus my purchases then what did I actually use in production? So what we'll have here is something we call direct materials. And I'll explain what that is in a bit, but it's those materials that directly relate to the production. And then we have something called indirect materials, which are those items that I cannot, they support production, but I cannot trace it to one particular um, job or one particular cost object. So, then that gives me my ending balance of raw materials. So what about factory payroll? Well, factory payroll is what are um, those individuals that are actually working in production. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at over here, we're gonna be looking at direct labor. 
and that's labor that directly relates to the production. And so we're going to put that over here. And then at the same time, we also are going to have indirect labor. And I'll give an example of that a little bit later. But for right now, just think about it this way. If I'm a car manufacturer and say, if I'm working at the Tesla plant and one car is the Cybertruck and the other is the Model 3, if I am an assembly worker on the Model 3, then this would be, if this work in process here was for Model 3s, then my, that would be a direct labor cost. But what if I had somebody walking at Tesla, walking the factory floor, not only helping out the Model 3 line, but also the uh, Cybertruck line, then that would be indirect labor because I can't trace that back to one particular um, item. So this indirect labor is gonna become a part over here in terms of what we call factory overhead. So the last component over here in terms of factory payroll and overhead is what exactly is factory overhead? It's those costs that are essentially supporting the production process. And these will be things like the rent cost of the factory, the utilities expense of the factory. The key important thing here is that it has to go through and relate to the production. So what's gonna happen is that this factory overhead is gonna be leaving here and coming out over here. And what's really important to remember, and we'll kind of see this shortly, but the factory payroll and the factory overhead are always gonna be closed out to zero. Our balance sheet will only have raw materials, inventory, work in process and finished goods. But again, for a manufacturer, we do have these holding accounts because it's not raw materials alone, which makes a product. So we start out here with these kind of raw elements. They go into work in process inventory. Then what's going to happen here is that this is where we make the chairs. And once we've completed the chairs and send them to our, they're ready to be sold. This is what we call our cost of goods manufactured. So our cost of goods manufactured goes from work in process inventory over here to our finished goods inventory. And then the, the final part in terms of going to finish goods to cost of goods sold, this is really kind of the same process that we're doing in this in a retail environment. But because we're in a manufacturing environment, just kind of think about it intuitively. Right over here, we, we take, you know, if we're making chairs, we're gonna have, we're making wooden chairs, we're going to have uh, costs, but basically that, you know, you know, we're gonna have, we're gonna purchase wood to make the chairs. Then we're gonna to have to hire individuals to help us, you know, go through and create the chairs. We're also gonna need a place to work to make those chairs. Those costs are gonna go into, as I'm using those raw materials, they're gonna be going into my work in process inventory. Then once the chairs are finished, they're gonna then go to the finished goods inventory, which is where we call, is what we call our cost of goods manufactured. And then lastly, it's after it goes, leaves finished goods, this is gonna go over here to cost of goods sold. Um, a lot of my students have trouble with T accounts. And what I would suggest that you do, if you do have trouble with T accounts, is to spend some time with them, or else you're gonna find my class to be an absolute nightmare. Uh, and it's just because I use T accounts almost exclusively because to me, this is a much better visual representation in terms of what's going on than looking at other different parts. So again, this is just, this is where it's different between a retailer and then a manufacturer. I'm not expecting you to fully grasp this at this point, but I just want you to have a, a larger understanding before we move on. So now we're going to talk about some managerial accounting concepts. And so right over here, how do we classify various different costs? Well, we're going to be looking at cost behavior. Is this cost behaving badly? Is this a Jerry Springer show? No, it's not. It's what the way we're going to classify costs is fixed, variable, or mixed. What does fixed mean? A fixed cost does not change with production. 
So for example, if I have a factory that can produce a million units per month and the rent of my factory is $50,000 per month, whether I produce one unit or a million units, my rental costs are fixed. And so my factory rent is going to be the same. Now with a variable cost, this is something that changes as production increases or decreases. For example, if I need 10 board feet of wood to make one chair, then the amount of board feet that I will require will depend upon the number of chairs I'm producing. So if I make one chair, I only need 10 board feet of wood. But if I need to make 100 chairs, I'm gonna need 1,000 board feet of wood. And this is why we would call, this is why that the wood for the chair is variable because if we increase or decrease production, the amount or the quantity of product that are, or materials or of labor will change along with that. We generally say that both direct labor and direct materials are almost always going to be variable costs. Okay, so what the other one over here is what is a mixed cost? So for example, this is gonna have a component of both fixed and variable. So for example, a cell phone data plan offers 20 gigabytes of data per month for $50. Each additional gigabyte of data is 10 bucks. So Jane uses 26 of data during the month. Based on the above, how much will Jane pay in data charges? Well, if Jane only used 10 gigabytes, she would still be paying $50 per month because it's the cell phone data plan is, you know, 50 bucks up to 20 gigabytes. However, if she goes beyond that, so that amount's fixed, but if she goes beyond that, what she did, she used six gigabytes of additional data, then she's gonna have to pay more. So we would say that that first 20 gigabytes is fixed, and then the other six gigabytes is what we call uh, variable. So it's a combination of fixed and variable. So it's fixed up to 20, it's variable beyond 20. So this is why we call this a mixed cost because it has elements of both. For direct versus indirect, this is generally referring to whether or not a cost can be traced back to a single product or what we call a cost object. Um, and these are really referred to generally as materials, labor, and factory overhead that are used in production. Um, and the example here would be if a company makes four products, Y, Z, X, and S, E, if a factory employee is exclusively working on product Y, this would be direct labor. At the same time, if you have a factory supervisor who is doing all four products, then this is going to be something where we would call this an indirect cost. And to use this by examples, let's go back over here. So I have my total factory payroll, which includes everybody. Now for the direct labor, if this is my work, if this is my product X, this is gonna go directly over here. I'm gonna apply this over to my work in process inventory because this directly relates to that product. Now over here with indirect labor is that it's first gonna go over here to factory overhead and then it's gonna ultimately make its way up to work in process inventory. We might be saying, well, Tchaikovsky, if there's only one work in process inventory account, then why are we bothering? Well, the reality is, is when we get to job order costing, you could have 10 different work in process accounts. And then this factory overhead gets spread out amongst all of those different accounts. So when we're looking at direct versus indirect, if I can directly, if it directly relates to the actual production, we call it a direct material, direct labor. If it is supporting it, we're going to call it an indirect amount. So that's kind of a way of visualizing that. Okay. So the next one over here is a product or a period cost. And the, what I want you to do is to remember the multi-step income statement. And this is something that's very important that you need to know from accounting 1A. And so when you were first learning accounting, you more than likely initially learned the single step income statement, which is revenues minus expenses. Now in managerial accounting, we're gonna be spending a lot of time with this particular income statement. So when I look at this over here, I have my sales minus my cost of, of goods sold, gives me my gross profit, less my selling general administrative expenses, 
gives me my net income before my income taxes. So this is my general income statement, my multi-step income statement. Where, what is a product versus a period cost? Well, a product cost is something that relates to cost of goods sold. And a period cost is pretty much gonna be everything else, anything other than a product cost. Now, a product cost is gonna be, they're really considered to be what is part of the inventory and ultimately expense to cost of goods sold. So when we're looking at what exactly is a product cost, right? anything that's going on in here in our production process will be a product cost. It's gotta be you know, something that relates to the actual production, direct labor, indirect labor, factory overhead components. You know, so that's a product cost. So, and then we look at over here, what exactly is a period cost? Well, a period cost is something other than a product cost. For example, it's really selling general and administrative expenses. So if we have sales commissions, if we have office rent expense, sales salaries, those are all gonna be examples of what we call period costs. And you wanna be careful too, because something with like sales commissions you think, oh, because it's part of the, it's part of the, if I, I have to pay that if I'm selling a product, and the answer is no. Sales commissions are part of selling general and administrative expenses. So it's once that product has been made, that's why we have that distinction. But a sales commission is part of selling general and administrative expenses, and this is what we call a period cost. Let's take a quick look at the balance sheets. Okay, so over here for a retailer, we would just see merchandise inventory. But for a manufacturer, we have raw materials inventory, work in process inventory, and finished goods inventory. And what's really important to remember about this is that factory payroll and overhead are what I call temporary holding accounts. And we're gonna make sure that those get closed out to zero at the end of the period. Um, the only inventory accounts that appear on the balance sheet are the three listed above. So let's go back over here and, and kind of look at this a little bit more, little, look at this a little bit more closely. So I'm here on the manufacturing side and what is actually going on my balance sheet? Well, it's my raw materials inventory because at the end of the month, I'm gonna have a certain portion that I still have not yet used. If I'm making chairs, I will probably still have some wood left over. But when it comes to payroll or it comes to other costs that I'm using in production, right? These accounts have to be closed out to zero, meaning that they're gonna be going through here and coming into my work and in process inventory. So this is another balance sheet account. And if you think about this, you have a beginning amount in process. Here's what I put in during the month. Here's what I completed. And here's what I have not fully completed yet. So we call this our ending work in process. Similarly, another balance sheet account for a manufacturer would be right over here of our finished goods inventory. These are different items that we've actually have gone through and we've actually gone through and actually have completed. So this is gonna look very, very similar to what you would be seeing over here for the retailer, right? So over here, these are the goods we've completed. My beginning finished goods inventory, plus what I actually completed during the period, minus what I sold gives me my ending finished goods inventory. So what we're gonna see on our balance sheet as a manufacturer is we're gonna see these three different accounts. We're gonna see raw materials inventory, we're gonna see work in process inventory, finished goods inventory, which will be our total inventory. Whereas for a retailer, they'll just be having merchandise inventory. Um, so thank you for watching. If you have any comments, please send them to me at 1812cpa at gmail.com. Uh, this is meant to be an introductory video for the uh, chapter, uh, just so you're familiar with concepts. And then what I'm going to do separately is you will see videos, um, if you're taking my class, uh, you will see videos for the basic, or I should say unlisted YouTube videos um, for other questions that are from your textbook. So anyways, have a great day and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a great one.